Like the image-conscious society of today, Romans viewed fashion and appearance as vitally important. And though understanding how they chose to appear to one another, we can better understand the Roman Empire's wider standing on the world stage. Toga parties, gladiator sandals and blockbuster films offer us a stereotypical impression of fashion in ancient Rome. However, the civilization of ancient Rome spanned over a thousand years and reached Spain, the Black Sea, Britain and Egypt. As a result, clothing varied hugely, with different styles, patterns and materials communicating information about the wearer, such as marital status and social class. Here's a rundown of what people in ancient Rome would wear every day. Basic garments were simple and unisex. The basic garment for both men and women was the tunica, or tunic. In its simplest form, it was just a single rectangle of woven fabric. It was originally woolen, but from the mid-republic onward was increasingly made of linen. It was sewed into a wide sleeveless oblong shape and pinned around the shoulders. A variation on this was the chiton, which was a long woolen tunic. The color of tunics is differentiated depending on social class. The upper class wore white, while the lower class wore natural or brown. Longer tunics were also worn for important occasions. Women's clothing was broadly similar. When they weren't wearing a tunica, married women would adopt a stola, a simple garment that was associated with traditional Roman virtues, especially modesty. Over time, women took to wearing many garments on top of each other. The toga was reserved for Roman citizens only. The most iconic piece of Roman clothing, the toga virilis, may have originated as a simple, practical working garment and blanket for peasants and herdsmen. Translating to the toga of manhood, the toga was essentially a large woolen blanket that was draped over the body, leaving one arm free. The toga was both complex to drape and restricted to Roman citizens only. Foreigners, slaves and exiled Romans were forbidden from wearing one, meaning that it awarded a special distinction to the wearer. Similar to the tunics, a commoner's toga was a natural off-white, whereas those of a higher rank wore voluminous, brightly coloured ones. The toga's impracticality was a sign of wealth. Most citizens avoided wearing a toga at all costs, since they were expensive, hot and heavy, hard to keep clean and costly to launder. As a result, they became suited to stately processions, oratory, sitting in the theatre or circus, and self-displaying among peers and inferiors only. However, from the late Republic onward, the upper classes favoured even longer and larger togas, which were unsuited to manual work or physically active leisure. The heads of households might equip their entire family, friends, freedmen and even slaves with elegant, costly and impractical clothing as a way of denoting extreme wealth and leisure. Over time, the toga was finally abandoned in favour of more practical clothing. Romans wore underwear. Underwear for both sexes consisted of a loincloth, much like briefs. They could also be worn on their own, especially by slaves who often engaged in hot, sweaty work. Women also wore a breastband, which was sometimes tailored for work or leisure. A 4th century AD Sicilian mosaic shows several bikini girls performing athletic feats and in 1953, a Roman leather bikini bottom was discovered in a well in London. For comfort and protection against the cold, both sexes were permitted to wear a soft under-tunic beneath the coarser over-tunic. In winter, Emperor Augustus wore up to four tunics. Though essentially simple in design, tunics were sometimes luxurious in their fabric, collars and detailing. Women wore accessories. Many upper-class women wore face powder, rouge, eyeshadow and eyeliner. Wigs and hair switches were also frequently worn, and certain colours of hair were fashionable, 
At one time, blonde wigs made from the hair of captured slaves were prized. Footwear was based on Greek styles, but was more varied. All were flat, aside from sandals. Several styles of shoes and boots existed, with simpler shoes reserved for the lower classes, contrasting with the elaborately patterned and intricate designs reserved for the wealthy. There was no standard clothing for slaves. Enslaved people in ancient Rome might dress well, badly, or barely at all, depending on their circumstances. In prosperous households in urban centers, slaves might have worn a form of livery. Cultured slaves who served as tutors could be indistinguishable from freedmen, whereas slaves serving in the mines might wear nothing. The historian Appian stated that a slave dressed as well as a master signaled the end of a stable and well-ordered society. Seneca stated that if all slaves wore a certain type of clothing, then they would become aware of their overwhelming numbers and try and overthrow their masters. We hope you enjoyed the video. What related topic would you like us to cover next? Leave a comment down below. We'd love to know. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one.